Let's fix the or and entity generation. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the OR generation and the entity generation. And we're actually going to make them a little bit more robust as well as fix one bug in the entity generation because there was actually one thing we forgot or I forgot to add. But let's first of all start with the OR generation here. So currently the OR generation is, well, workable and you can filter it, of course. However, a lot of people just don't know how to filter it properly. Therefore, I've made a class which is going to make this a little bit easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over the entirety of the new class. This is, of course, available in the description below, either in the GitHub repository or in individual gists. And there are two more modifications that we need to do. One of them is in the or type, actually, where we need a new field here, which is going to be the vein veins per chunk. And then, of course, we add that to the constructor as well, int veins, veins per chunk. And then we say this dot veins per chunk equals veins per chunk. And then right click generate getter, which will generate the get veins per chunk getter. And we'll just make this so that it looks a little bit nicer. And then up here in all of our or types that we actually define, we have to also now add how many veins per chunk are spawning. So this is very important. And then just to show this, I'm going to add another one, which we're going to call Firestone. And it's going to be a lazy of Firestone. This, of course, doesn't work because I need a comma here. There you go. And then we can do Firestone block. There you go. And we'll make this a little bit different. So let's say max vein size is only three. So a little like a fewer, but we're going to make this spawn from like 10 to 80 and then veins per chunk is going to be let's do it five just so that we are actually be able to see this and inside of here in the mod or generation what we can do basically is we can specify hey we want to spawn this or in a specific mod biome and we can pass in this this biome here so the amethyst will only spawn in the rift biome we can also have this spawn in a specific uh, vanilla biome this is going to be biome biomes dot and then we specify the biome so for example dark forest in this case if i were to call those two then it would spawn in the rift biome and the dark forest so they are not sort of exclusive for each other so you can call this multiple times for the same or type in theory however for the or type here this is always going to be the same you can of course also add multiple ones with the same block a little bit of java knowledge here really helps for you to just expand this however you like at this point I know that I've been saying this for a long time now, but genuinely it's it's actually not that difficult, right? And then we also have this spawn in all biomes. And what you can see here is that we actually have to supply a specific dimension here. So spawn in all biomes, if I go down here, we can see that this is the spawn in all biomes method. We actually see that this calls the make fake or feature with the dimension given in. And if we take a look at the make or feature, this is up here, and you can see that it actually checks, okay, which dimension should this be spawned in? It's going to create the or config based on which dimension it should spawn in. So that's pretty much what we have here. This currently only supports vanilla dimensions. So please keep that in mind. If you have uh, different mods that add dimensions or your own mod adds a dimension currently not supported however it should be fairly easy to expand once again with some java knowledge this should be fairly straightforward however this we're going to try this and see if this works in a moment but first of all let's also change the entity generation in the actual mod entity generation class we are going to add this as well so we're going to just change this in its entirety so we're gonna just copy this over here and nothing really should change really um we only have now the add entity to all overworld biomes we have to all biomes to nether and then all biomes to end and then also to all biomes so in this case we can basically just say hey we only want this to spawn in the overworld biomes right so this one would spawn it into everything but the nether and this one would spawn it to all but the end so the idea is that this is going to spawn it into the overworld and the end this is going to spawn it in the nether and the overworld this is only going to spawn it in the overworld and of course with this logic you should be able to add your own logic as well if you really want it to and then last but not least what we also need is actually a call inside of our tutorial mod class and that's going to be the entity spawn placement registry this is inside of the setup method right here i'm going to copy this over and i'm going to explain quickly so the idea here is that currently our entities would just spawn in the air now that is not quite what we i had in mind for these entities and you can see that this now basically says hey this placement type is on ground there are also different placement types in water no restriction in lava and 
you can also take a look at the entity placement registry class to actually see how the, how the vanilla entities are being spawned here. There are different methods at the end here, as you can see how you have some animal entity, you can say, hey, monster entity, spawn in light, and so on and so forth. So there's a few things that you can check here as the well, last method, basically. We're going to just choose the normal can animal spawn and can monster spawn. That is going to be fine. And then with that, Basically, the ore generation and the entity generation are upgraded and are going to be even cooler and even better than before. So now let's see if we can find everything in the world. And let's not forget to make a new world because, of course, we once again changed the world generation. Just making sure that you don't forget that. And here it is. I finally found it. As you can see, the amethyst ore spawning inside of the rift biome. And now let's actually go to the nether. And there we have one. There you go. It did spawn. And actually only one of them. But that's, of course, totally fine. They're quite rare. So you will have to probably adjust those numbers a little bit depending on what exactly you want. Let's also see how the entities fare. So making sure we're at least on easy mode, I've set it to night and let's see. So we should be able to get some spawns in here somewhere. Let's actually make it a little bit worse here. There it is. So now there are the buff zombies spawning in and what happened was that they also spawned in the in the air. So if there were basically floating islands where it was dark below, then they would also spawn in the air. But now they will no longer spawn in the air, but they will only spawn on the ground and also in the biomes specified. And then basically here at the end, I also wanted to mention, you know, some of those corrections, they're not, that's not something bad, right? So code, even in your mod, is a evolving product or a, an evolving thing, right? So changing stuff that has already been done it's not to you shouldn't look at it as oh this is bad you know i've done it bad the first time no, no that's not the case it's just that hey, i've i've figured out hey how, how can i do this better this is how i can do it better and then you just add that and that's okay so there's nothing to be ashamed about by the way here at all so this is totally fine and i wanted to do this correction basically because i found that um first of all the entity spawning in the in the air was that's what that was actually kind of game breaking and for the ore generation you know filtering properly here is pretty good i think that this could probably be improved still however for the time being i think that this is absolutely fine and works totally like great and should work for I mean, almost everyone, really. Once again, you can, of course, make your own additions to this as well in your own projects. And some Java knowledge there is absolutely vital for just making some additions there. So that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And I will see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.